do not panic. That is the message experts are preaching against the spread of coronavirus in Nigeria. Discussing the topic, advocacy on coronavirus on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria, Minister of Information and Culture, who is among the guests, said in the absence of a cure for the virus, for now, prevention is the best food forward. Ekemini Williams has a report. The case of COVID-19 in Nigeria has continued to raise concerns. However, Incident Manager National Coronavirus Emergency Operations Center, Dr. John Oladejo says there is no cause for alarm. It is a plus for us that we were able to have all our contacts in safe place and we are monitoring them. And when this now come down with the disease, having with the infection, uh, we, we took care of them immediately. So it's not a panic. There shouldn't be any fear. The guests say, although the virus has capacity to cripple the economy, it is imperative for state and local governments, as well as citizens, to take ownership of the fight and cooperate with the federal government in its efforts to prevent the spread of the virus. Even at the airport, when they tell some people to fill forms or to, to be checked, some people think, no, they don't need it, or they think that they are VIPs. Yes, yes. The extent to which we prevent is contingent upon the information, correct information made available to citizens from all relevant agencies that have to do with the containment of this disease. This is where I think our appeal to states and local governments becomes even more and more relevant. Our batwas markets are all run by state and local governments. And motor parks. And motor parks. Mm -hmm. So well, while we sit on top here in Abuja, dishing out you know, policies, money, the uh, points of entry, uh, sensitizing people, of course, there must also be concrete effort. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed warns against spread of fake news. Another fake news was that if you take garlic, it will cure the virus. It's not true. Instead, citizens are advised to call the helpline 0800-970010 for inquiries and information on the COVID-19 in Nigeria. In Abuja, Ekemini Williams, NTA News. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has set up an ad hoc committee to look into the downward slide of the price of crude oil at the international market as a result of the coronavirus. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that the issue came up as a matter of urgent importance at Tuesday's plenary. Following the outbreak of coronavirus, stock markets across the world continue to plunge a situation the lawmakers say calls for concern as the price of crude oil benchmarked at $57 per barrel for the 2020 Appropriation Act is now about $30 per barrel. My half might not be able to be implemented. Also to be investigated by an ad hoc committee chaired by Representative Amiru Tukur Idris is the level of cleanup and environmental remediation in oil producing states in the last five years. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo says no stone will be left unturned in addressing all challenges confronting businesses in the country. The Vice President gave the assurance during a courtesy visit to his office by members of the Kano State Chamber of Commerce seeking government's urgent intervention and the epileptic supply of power in the state. State House correspondent Jide Onifade tells us more. The erratic supply of electricity, as members of the Kano Chamber of Commerce say, is one of the major challenges to the industrial sector in the state. The challenge is that we have about 300 uh, industries in Kano and it's abundant. We need intervention from the federal government. With the energy, it will make our industry to be more competitive. More especially in terms of production, we can improve our, our produce at, at affordable price so that we can compete favorably to whatever product that can come inside the Nigeria. 
The request for solutions to these challenges being faced by business in the state was presented to the Vice President, who reiterated the determination of the federal government to the country having an enabling environment for business to thrive. The power sector has been of great concern of the federal government lately, prompting the setting up of a committee headed by Governor El Rufai of Katuna State on how the sector would perform optimally. Vice President Yemi Oshimbatu assured the industrialists that the federal government understands the implication of these challenges on the economy and it's working hard to find appropriate solutions to these problems. The delegation led by Dalhatu Abubakar, President of the Kano State Chamber of Commerce, comments government's response to these issues. Closure of the border has helped a lot of the revival of the, another, uh, the industries now. We want to move Nigeria to the next level in as much as we will have the backing of the federal government. The delegation was assured that a committee would be set up to further look into the requests. In the State House, Jide Onifade, NT News. The Senate has passed the Companies and Allied Matters Act repeal and re-enactment bill 2020. The legislators are to also embark on the amendment of Finance Act 2019 as requested by President Buhari, National Assembly Correspondent Ignatius Onko reports. It was a new legislative week in the Senate chamber as the other paper pointed towards a busy day, but eventually witnessed suspension of some of the scheduled items for consideration. Plenary took up with President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, reading an executive communication from President Muhammad Buhari requesting the amendment of the Finance Act 2019. That the administrative effective date for the increase in value-added tax from 5% to 7.5% is the 1st of February 2020 that animal feeds in court are included in the list of basic food items that are exempt from value-added tax. The first item on the order paper for consideration was the report on the Companies and Allied Matters Act to repeal and re Bill 2020. The bill, when signed into law, is expected to increase business activities, especially of small and medium-scale enterprises, by removing constraints in business registration and lubricates the machinery of ease of doing business in the country. Of course, for the executive side of government, they are waiting for this. I believe that this bill, having passed in the Senate and, of course, the House of Representatives, will soon be signed into law by Mr. President, and Nigeria would have jumped over 30 spaces in the ease of doing business in the world. Thank you very much. Congratulations. In furtherance of its intervention in the economy, the Senate has mandated its committees on finance and preparation national planning to engage the executive on putting in place proactive measures against the effect of the falling oil price in the international market. And immediately at the conference room, the Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, briefed Senate Committee on Finance on the status of federal government generated revenue between January and February 2020, and the reason for the depletion of the SS crude account, which at the moment stands at $71.8 million. And to know what I want has led to such a huge deduction in the account. Yes, and this is account payment for the purchase of super. The Accountant General explained that a total of 581.8 billion naira has been generated as revenue for the country between January and February this year. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nko, NTA News. To other matters now. 24 hours after his appointment as the 15th Fulani Emir of the Asian city, the Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayero, has held his first engagement. Fatima Sandusikaya reports that the first royal sitting had in attendance all the king makers and other traditional title holders of the Emirates Council. Nasarawa Royal Palace was today filled with well wishes and jubilators who trooped to congratulate the new Emir of Kano, Amino Ado Bayeru, who is the 15th Fulani Emir of the dynasty. He served as one Bankanu before he was appointed as Emir of Bichi. 
district heads and traditional title holders were also at the palace to show solidarity and respect for the new monarch. Others present were business communities from both within Kanu and neighboring states. The Sarawa Royal Palace is a place where past emirs of the state go for leisure and it is a home to the tombs of some past royal leaders. While in the other part of the city, all is calm as people in the state go about their normal businesses. In Kano, Fatima Sanusi Garae, NTA News. Meanwhile, the deposed 14th Emir of Kando, Muhammadu Sanusi II, is in, in Awe town in Nassau State on exile. The place of exile was changed from local town in Nassau West to Awe in the southern zone due to security and remote location. He was received by the Awe Traditional Council and people of the community. On arrival in Lafia, the deposed Emir was received by officials and some traditional rulers at the government house. Let's now go for commission messages. We hope to go back to that story later.